Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to play Hideout in Age of Empires 2. This is a reoccurring series where I talk once a week about a map and how to play it in depth. And so I will cover some stuff for 1v1s and because you guys asked for it, I'll also cover the map in team games and give some brief overview on how to play it in 3v3s, 2v2s, 4v4s, etc. But to start things off, let's take a look at the map Hideout and see what it looks like and what the basics of the map are. So starting things off at first glance, we can see that you start with a square palisade wall base, that it's palisade walls on one side and a forest on the other. And if you take an even closer look, you'll notice that your opponent is in a similar position and that big forest in the center is actually separating your base from your opponent's base. And so while it is possible to chop all those trees down, it usually takes a long time. This means that for any early game rushes, you have to go all the way on the outside to attack your opponent. And this is a long way around. And they also have that palisade wall to prevent any early aggression in general. And so usually it's quite hard to attack attack your opponent in the early game and same being said you can't really get attacked as hard as well now there is a chance for early game attacks and i will talk about them later but it's not the conventional scouts or archers play other things to note about hideout from the visual inspection is that there's some golds and stones on the outside as well as some smaller wood lines to take in case you get pushed off the middle one for whatever reason there are also five relics scattered across the map which definitely play a big role in the late game another thing to note is that because the map is kind of like split into one side and the other if you get controls of the sides and you start stonewalling them, you can prevent your opponent from maneuvering around the map while you still gain access to the whole map because you're able to, you know, control the sides, wall them up and just put some gates so you can pass and your opponent can't. So this is a very common approach to the late game and hideout is to control the sides where the extremity forest is very close to the edge of the map. If you just wall that, you usually have some pretty good success at controlling that map. All right, now that we have a good idea of what the map looks like, let's talk about what we want to play for. Well, we can either play towards the late game or we can try to play towards the early game. However, on Hideout, there's basically one similarity between these two strategies and one overall goal that you need to have. We need to play for the map control. If you're gonna be pinned inside your base on Hideout and your opponent has control of the sides and the outsides of your base, you're gonna be completely stuck in there because behind you, there's only forest, which takes a long time to chop. And so you can very easily get a little bit claustrophobic behind there. And there's not that much golden stone behind your walls. And so if you don't have the map control over time, you're gonna be running out of minerals and you're going to be in a very bad spot. So whether you decide to go for early game rushes or middle game plays, the most important thing is to gain control of that map because that's going to decide who has the better position going into the late game. You can also decide to play for the relics because that's a really good way to secure the late game as well. But that's something I don't recommend to do too early because the five relics are usually quite scattered and it's very hard to get all five of them. And it also takes a long time to bring them all in. And so it's usually not worth to go for that right off the bat. But it is something in there to consider playing for. And as I mentioned earlier, playing for the sides of the map is also really crucial because walling those up is so so important going into that mid late game so those are kind of the overall options that you have all right so with those options in mind let's talk about the most common strategies well, if you want to do the early rushing map control early kind of style, the only real way to put pressure on your opponent in the early game is through a tower rush. There's two ways to do this. You can either go for a pure tower rush, sending villas forward, using your towers to make sure your opponent can't wall behind and using your villagers to break down that palisade wall. Yeah, it's usually a pretty good way to break into your opponent's base and force them to fight you in feudal age. You can also go for archers or scouts once you break the wall, but you have to open with a tower rush to be able to break the wall because archers won't be able to do it and scouts won't be able to do it either. Since if you go scouts, you'll just wall behind with houses and you won't break in. If you go archers, even if you have fletching, you can still make market walls behind it or just other layers of walls behind it where you can't actually reach the villagers and so your, your rush will fail. You won't be able to break it in time. And so the only way to break in is with the tower rush and the villagers. Another variant of the tower rush you can try is men at arm tower rush. So you send four villas usually with three men at arms. The men at arms kill the wall and the villagers make the tower. This is a very similar approach to the tower rush. It's just a little bit different since you have the men at arms to kill the buildings. And so it's usually a more investment for you, but it has a higher punch because the men at arms can get into the woodlands or the golds or just attacking houses and it can cause a lot of havoc over time if your opponent doesn't have an answer to them so both of these approaches are definitely very viable to break it into your opponent's very fragile palace at wall now the dangers of these approaches or these strategies is that it puts the villagers in a very exposed location so on one hand if your opponent is going fast castle and you tower rush him life is good because your opponent won't have any military on the field and so your tower rush will go pretty uncontested and you can disrupt him quite heavily that being said if your opponent also commits to some sort of feudal army in defense and doesn't go for the 
the castleage, you could stand to lose a lot of those villagers and get your tower rush completely denied. So those are definitely something you have to consider if you decide to go for the strategy. The other approach is basically, as I mentioned, fast castle. This means that you just go as fast as possible to the castle age and you can either get some siege pushes going in castle age, siege knights, that kind of stuff, or you can decide to just develop your economy by adding in a couple town centers. So these are basically the three most common strats. Either you tower rush, you go for a fast castle into some sort of push, or you go for a fast castle into a boom. All three of them are viable. All three of them are good in their own right. And it really comes down to what your sieve is, what your style is, and what you actually want to go for. Neither strategy or none of the three strategies are better than the other and just gonna get you free wins it really comes down to a lot more complicated details than that all right, it's a good time to talk about some of the strategies in team games now. So real quick in 2v2s, usually you want to watch out for rushes when it comes to 2v2 hideout, because if one guy goes for like a tower rush to keep the base open and the other guy goes for a castle H push, which is two of the three strategies I mentioned used together, then one of your players can get completely defeated because the men at arm player or the men at arm tower rush or the pure tower rush player will keep him pinned in feudal age, open up his walls. And then the player going castle H can add in some siege and knights and just completely wipe him. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't have the map control, you can't run anywhere. So you can completely die in a matter of minutes if you don't respect this rush. So in 2v2s, I recommend you either do this rush or you prepare to defend it. You can defend it by either going for like some siege and monk defense or for both of you guys to make some military in the early game and not let your opponent get those towers up on you. So those are kind of two good defensive options, but definitely something that you have to adapt into. And then in 3v3, it's usually both flanks doing some sort of rush in feudal age with some towers, something to keep your opponents open, and then the pocket going for some sort of knight play in castle. If you don't want to be the the guy rushing then just prepare defense so if you're defending on the flank try to make some archers or something to keep yourself safe don't let yourself get towered on and just get opened up because then you will die and if you're the pocket make sure you're going some sort of cavalry to actually be able to defend your flanks or to launch a push or to just control the map in general it is possible that in 3v3 hideout that most players decide to just boom and not go for the aggression so definitely keep that as an option but it's really important to scout your opponents keep your scouts along their walls so that you don't actually die to their pushes and you can actually see them coming if you see them coming from a lot sooner then it's going to be easier to defend them more often than not. And then for 4v4 hideout, it's very similar. It's like 2v2 on both sides. So one guy can tower rush or something to keep your opponents open. And then the other guy can go for knights. Other rushes in team games is like monk rush from the flank, monk siege all in. And then the pocket goes for either a boom or some cavalry to support that. So in general, for team games, one player will rush, one player will attack. And it's the same thing on both sides in case of a 4v4. And that's why for 1v1s, you have the option to either boom or rush. But in team games, it's kind of like one person takes one role and the other person takes the other role. And then the coin flip role, which is the booming role, can either win big if you don't get disrupted or it can lose you big if you get completely overrun. And so those three strategies that I mentioned earlier are very applicable to both 1v1s and team games. All right, so now that we have a good grasp on how to play the map in general, let's talk about some of the civs that work best for the styles here. And so if you want to go for like a tower rush, the best civilizations to do this with are civilizations that are strong in the early game. Something like Romans with men at arm tower. Those are new, good civilizations to do that with. You'll definitely be able to break in. The men at arms are super tanky. Civs like Poles can mine stone earlier. And so those are usually really good at tower rushing as well because you can get that stone. It counts as some gold as well when you mine it. So that's pretty solid, lets you rush quite fast. Any civ that gets a lot of early game resources like Ethiopians can also launch a pretty strong men at arm tower push. And then civs like Teutons can go really nice with that pure tower rush because they can garrison 10 bills their towers. Koreans with guard towers as well can be pretty interesting. So just usually aggressive tower oriented or infantry oriented civilizations do that first style of feudal rushing quite well. If you want to go for like some sort of siege push in the castle age or early map control, I highly recommend going for either a civilization with a strong unique unit like the conquistador and then you can use a conquistador with some siege and monks to break in. Or you can go for some sort of monk civ like the Burmese or the Bengalis that have great monks and then you can support the monks with some pikemen or some spears and then some siege and that's also a really good early castle age push and then if you want to go for the pure boom approach usually you want to go for something that has a good late game like britons with their 12 range longbows and trebs can be very deadly something like teutons that can go for like a halb or champion siege or death ball they've got monks and bomber cans can be insane for the late game so those civilizations that are great in the late game then definitely booming with them can be a great option and so those are kind of like the styles of civs you want to pick and you usually want to match the civilization with the style you're going for Alright, before I let you guys go though, I'm going to give you guys a few pro tips to help you out. So the main pro tip here is that if you see your opponent going for relics, keep your starting scout alive and try to snipe some of his monks. The relics are really spread out, so it'll take him forever to pick them up. Make sure you just snipe a bunch of his monks as they try to go for the relics. And then later on, like after you're booming or whatever you're doing is over or developed, then you can just try to go for relics as well and try to secure at least two. That way you have an economy advantage because you're booming. And then you also don't get like your opponent has five relics and you have zero. You have two, he has three. It's no big deal. You're still fine and you have a pretty big edge 
edge in the economy because he went for monastery early. If your opponent goes for a minute on tower rush and tries to pin you into your base, it could be a really good option to at some point sneak some villagers out and try to get access to gold and stone if you can't get access to those resources in your base. Oftentimes, the people who rush you like that aren't going to keep their army on the outside. They're going to keep all their army in one spot protecting their towers or attacking you. And so if you just sneak onto the outside and take some gold and stone, just somewhere like kind of close by to your base, but away from his push, can be a really good way to get access to minerals while also having a pretty safe base inside your walls. And so that way you can get the golden stone from outside and then just keep your wood safe at the back. And if he doesn't find you, you basically have a free path to win because he wasn't able to deny you all the golden stone, but be sneaky about it. And the last tip is if your opponent goes for any kind of all in push, fast imp, monk rush, that kind of stuff, try to expand and buy time. Hideout is a very big map. You can always expand onto the other side. If he pushes you from one side, you can have a free pass to expand on the other side. It's very rare that he'll be able to all in push you from both sides. It's just way too expensive and not feasible. And so if he comes at one side, try to defend as much as possible to buy yourself time and then expand on the other side. If he's all in, he's gonna have a very weak economy. So counterattacking him after defending initially at the push can be a very good option to claw yourself back in. So expansion and counterattacks is the secret to defending those all in pushes. All right, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know what map you want to see next week on this little map guide series. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.